Hey, future badass business owners, welcome back to the Start a Small Business podcast, where each episode we will be walking you through the process of getting your small business from concept to open for business. Over the next couple of episodes, I'm going to discuss people, employees, independent contractors, anybody that you bring aboard to help you with your business. Now, whether you plan to have somebody in the beginning or not, you probably want to make sure that you at least listen to this episode because it's going to help keep you out of trouble because I promise you at some point you're going to try to hire some hands to help you out in your business. Now, I'm not going to spend a bunch of episodes on people because most of you are not going to hire employees from the get-go. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that, but I do want to touch on it because I think there's some things that everybody needs to know. So the main thing that I want you to walk away with in this particular episode is one, do you even need any employees and what you need to expect? And I also want to go over the fact that there's different types of employees uh, slash helpers independent contractors that will help you out. So the first thing is, do you even need employees? Well, if you have a brick and mortar business, we'll start there because that's a no brainer. In most cases, you absolutely have to have employees because brick and mortars typically have hours of operation. And while you are great at what you do, you are going to get severe burnout if you try to be the one that's covering the floor from beginning to end of the day. Trust me, I've been there, I've worn that t-shirt and it was exhausting because I had a business that was open seven days a week and there were times when hiring was tough after the recession and being able to get the right person and all these different things and financially and all these different reasons that you're going to come up with to work the building by yourself, it will become old really quick. Uh, in particular case that I had is all three of my shift leaders went on to some really amazing things. Granted, they're kids, so you know they're going to get promotions at their other jobs. They're going to get school. Their parents are going to drag them off. All these different things that happen. But the main thing you have to keep in mind is when you have a brick and mortar business, you're going to end up with some employees, and more than likely you're going to hire them on, and you're going to set up a payroll. So as part of your new business, you need to make sure that you set up who's your payroll going to be through. The other thing you need to make sure you check into is going to be your workers' comp, making sure you have the correct insurance on your place. There are a lot of things that you need to check off if you're going to be hiring employees into your business. Uh, Now, if you are a service-based business or a different type of business and you plan to have people help you, here's the thing you need to keep in mind. There's a difference between payroll employees and independent contractors. Independent contractors are typically what people think they're doing because they're hiring someone off the street to help them out for a job or to help them out with one or two things or to help them out on a temporary basis. Basically, the way the government looks at an independent contractor is you issue them a 1099 at the end of the year. They file their own taxes. They take care of all that. You do not collect taxes from them at all. You just give them a wage and they do what it is that you've hired them to do. But here's where the problem comes in. You can't tell them what to do. You can't tell them to be there at a certain time. You can't make them wear a uniform. You can't make... So it's basically you're hiring them for that job saying, show up at this time. This is If you want the job, show up at this time. There's no hiring them. There's no firing them. It's just they show up. Here's the job. If they want it, they just come do it and you're going to pay them for it. It sounds really weird. It's really weird rules that are around this, but it's to protect the employee because a lot of people were taking advantage of this and never hiring anybody the correct way and paying what they should be paying and giving them the proper coverage that they needed. Uh, While it's in my head, please make sure that you have proper insurance on your business if you're going to have anyone come work for you. And I'm not just talking workers comp. I'm talking liability insurance because if one of these people get hurt while they're working for you, either as an employee or an independent contractor, you are going to be liable. So please make sure you have the proper insurance overall if you're going to have anybody that's going to be helping you on the job site or in your brick and mortar. Like I said, I'm not going to go into a lot of massive detail on this. Just know that you have full-time employees, which typically are hired. You have part-time employees that you don't give full-time hours to. What are full-time hours? Full-time hours range dramatically, but most people say full-time hours is around 30 hours. Sometimes people define full-time hours based off of when they're eligible for benefits. In most cases, you guys aren't going to start off by giving them a benefits. Some of you might, uh, depending upon the type of business that you're doing. But for the most part, you're not doing that. But you're going to say, okay, our full-time is 30 hours 
a week. Some people are going to say 40 hours a week, which is the more traditional. But over the years, more and more full time has been somewhere between 30, 32. And that gives them the flexibility to flex up to 40 hours when business is good, because most overtime rules are based off of 40 hours in the week, which is why so many of them set it at a lower bar. So that way, if they do give them more hours, they're not automatically locked in to giving overtime hours. Part-time people uh, can be from one shift all the way up to five shifts. It really comes down to the hours. It's anywhere from one hour all the way up to what your your full-time hours. Can you work a part-time person full-time hours? Yes, but you can only do it for so long. Uh, one, it's not healthy. That's a great way to go through all of your part-time people. Uh, if you need them for those hours, make them full-time, do the right thing by them. Uh, but in most cases, they're their part time. Now, when it comes to temporary employees, can you hire them as an independent contractor and then turn around and make them full time in your business? You need to make sure that you're really careful with this one because a temporary employee is someone that you truly are hiring for temporary reasons. That job only lasts for six weeks or 12 weeks. Uh, there's a difference between temporary employees and probationary employees. Probationary employees, they're hired onto the company their benefits and some of the perks that they get are what are probationary, which means that they don't kick into 90 days. But temporary employees are people that aren't necessarily hired into the business with the thoughts of being long-term. So you want to be really careful with that because sometimes we do hire people into the business that are going to be, you know, we're going to see how they do. uh, And if they do well, we're going to make them full-time hours or give them full-time status or whatever it is that you're going to do. So just make sure that there's some local HR uh, resources. There's some national HR resources. There's some, uh, when I say HR, that's human resources. It's what big companies typically have in place to help them with any of their people issues. And as a small business owner, you're not going to have a full-time HR or even probably a part-time HR, which is where these uh, programs and these outside HRs or these HRs for hire can sometimes really come in handy for your business. Now, one of the other big things I want to touch on in this particular episode is you have to pay these people. And in most cases, they're going to be under your cost of goods because the reason that you're bringing them on is you need their help in producing or providing the product or service that you have. So when you're setting your prices, and earlier you remember I talked about making sure that you have labor hours included when you're setting your prices. Well, please make sure that if you're going to have employees in your business from the get-go, that you have done this exercise. Now, if you have a brick and mortar and they're not making anything or putting anything together, they're just basically watching a register or doing operational work, then you need to make sure that you're including them in your operational expenses because that's where they're going to fall. All the other payroll expenses are going to be under operations, whether they're their cost of goods or they're in operations. You're still going to have additional payroll expenses when it comes to like their taxes, the workers comp and the payroll expenses in order to, to run payroll process that that's all going to be under operational expenses. So please make sure that you capture that as well. Once again, your operational expenses are part of your pricing plan as well. Remember sales, minus cost of goods, minus expenses equals profits. So everything to do with those employees need to be accounted for when you're setting your prices to make sure that your business can be profitable. Now I could go on and on when it comes to employees. And here's what we're going to do. I'm going to do one more episode where I'm going to talk about hiring these employees and bringing them aboard. But for the most part, these are going to be the two main episodes because honestly, majority of you are not going to be hiring employees, nor should you be hiring employees. It's really important that you run the numbers before you hire any employee. And if you have a service-based business and you're like, oh, I'm going to be coming out the shoot and I'm going to be blowing through the every, all these sales and I'm going to be doing wonderful and fantastic, make sure you run the numbers. What type of business, how much money do you need to make in order for you to be able to pay for that employee? I will tell you, when you hire your very first employee, this is not a decision you take lightly. And I talk about this over on the Badass Business Owner Podcast, because honestly, they're going to cost you money. You're, when you hire somebody, you're literally saying, I'm going to give up $10,000, $20,000, $30,000 of my money, my business's profit, my own personal income, if you're paying yourself and they're going to be taking on some of the work you currently do, 
and I'm going to be giving it to this other person. There is no magic fairy that comes in and gives you extra money to pay for these employees. So it's important that you have worked out the business numbers so this way you can ensure that you personally are still making the money you need to make and you have enough money to cover the business. Because as you hire employees, I'm telling you, your profitability goes down. It's just a natural thing that happens. You might pocket 40%, for example, when you're a one-person band, but the minute you start bringing someone aboard, be prepared that that might drop down to 20% profitability. Or in some cases, it might go from 25 all the way down to 10. It just depends on the business, depends how well you're pricing, and it depends upon how much business that you're doing. Anytime you have an employee, it is an investment in your business. You need to treat it like an investment. It needs to have a return on that investment. And every employee you need to make sure brings you in much more than what they cost you to have. If you hire someone and all of a sudden they're going to make $20,000 a year, that doesn't mean that they increase your business by 20,000 in sales. It means you need to increase your profits by $20,000 in order to be able to pay for them and continue to make the amount of money you're accustomed to making currently. Hopefully all this is helpful. And like I said, we talk a little bit more about employees and all of that over on the Badass Business Owner channel. And there's more about it in the Start a Small Business course that's linked below. I go into a lot more detail. I've got a whole section module, if you will, on employees and hiring them and putting things in place and, you know, employee manuals, all that good stuff that you need to have. Uh, so if you want to check out and learn more, uh, check out that course, that's going to help you out. But today we're just going over some of the basics you need to know before you hire any employees. So in the next episode, like I said, we're going to talk really quick about uh, hiring them just to give you a basic uh, understanding. And then we will start to uh, wrap up this podcast series with a few episodes you don't want to miss. All right, with that, I'll talk to you on the next episode. Bye for now.